Howdy folks! I wanted to do a video that introduces the Hudson River Valley School of Art so that when you go to watch the subsequent videos that showcase some of the Hudson River Valley School's paintings, you'd be able to appreciate and understand them a little bit more for what they were representing. The Hudson River School was a group of American landscape artists that were painting from roughly 1825 to 1880. The, it was the first uh, distinctive uh, quintessentially American school of art uh, in the country. The Hudson River School was uh, characterized by very realistic, very detailed, and often idealized uh, portraits of nature that reflected at least three themes, that of exploration and discovery and settlement. This was the time when uh, folks were pioneering and moving west, and the Hudson River School would paint some of the epic uh, pictures of nature that people were discovering as they were moving west. The Hudson River School was known for its use of light. People that displayed the light effects and the playing effects of light in the paintings uh, often came to be known and grew into a movement called uh, Luminism. And then other Hudson River artists that downplayed light and painted more in shades and, and muted tones and shadows came to be known as Totalism. Although uh, the religious convictions of the Hudson River School artists varied widely, they all agreed that nature was a reflection of God and painted to uh, reflect God's nature and even to bring glory and honor to God. And that is one of the things I so uh, appreciate it, especially being uh, limited physically and not being able to get out into nature as much. It's wonderful being able to see such things on these paintings that help me more understand God. And there's tons of scriptures that uh, reflect this um, idea that scripture reflects God and reflects God's grandeur and reflects God's glory. Perhaps the best known is Psalm 19.1 where it says, The heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. And there's several psalms uh, from Psalm 94 and 96 throughout the 90s that talk about this connection of nature reflecting and displaying God's glory. The Hudson River artists did something very uh, kind of unique for the time. They would travel places, both locally and ultimately internationally, and they simply paint the things that they had seen. The movement did, in fact, start in the Hudson River Valley, and a lot of those scenes uh, portray that. But then they went on to paint, travel to and paint places like Lake George and the Catskills and the Adirondacks, or the White Mountains in New England, the Wyoming Valley and the Susquehanna Valley in Pennsylvania. Niagara Falls was a pretty common uh, subject. Many of the Hudson River Valley artists came to be known primarily for painting seascapes. Then ultimately some of the best known painters uh, moved west and traveled west and painted epic scenes of the west. And ultimately some of the best known artists traveled the world and painted what they saw in the world as well. I wanted to tell you about two of my most favorite uh, Hudson Valley, Hudson River Valley artists. The first is uh, Albert Bierstadt. Bierstadt actually literally helped the West to be settled. He traveled West with surveying teams, military surveying teams, and simply painted what he saw. And then when these paintings got sent back to the East, people were able to see for the first time what the West looked like, and then it led to people moving there. My uh, second favorite artist is uh, Frederick Church. He was really a celebrity in his day. He traveled the world, South America and the Arctic and Jerusalem and the Middle East, and painted these uh, grand, epic canvases uh, displaying these places. Now remember, this was a time where very, very, very few Americans were ever going to travel to the West or to the world and see the things that were being painted and there was no TV, there was no internet, there was no cell phones. Uh, photography was still kind of new and most people weren't, weren't going to be able to see these things in person. And so getting to see these paintings was like going to the movies for us today. And uh, Frederick Church took his most famous painting, which is called Heart of the Andes, and he put it on display and charged people like a dime or a quarter to come in and see it. And 12,000 people stood in line over the three weeks that it was on display to come in and see it. And he had it set up in this big display with lights and curtains and plants. And it, had, it was a huge canvas. It was uh, nine feet wide by about five feet high. And it had such a profound effect 
on people, so that women were swooning and fainting over the intense uh, glory of this painting that they had never seen before. And this is one of the things that I enjoy about uh, the Hudson River School, is, is the depiction of nature, that feeling of being inspired and uplifted, and that feeling of being able to be closer to God simply by being in nature, whether it's actually being in nature or being able to see it re represented in the paintings of the Hudson River School. And I hope you enjoy the videos that I've produced that display some of the finest works of the Hudson River artists. God bless.